few days ago somebody asked me how to do multiple regression in SPM and the answer is it can depend on whether you're talking about first level or a second level analysis. At the first level for each subject uh, multiple regression refers to entering things into your model that aren't convolved with any sort of you know, basis function or doing something like a finite impulse response model. Now in SPM, they make a distinction between conditions, which usually are convolved with some basis function, and regressors, which are not. They're basically entered into the GLM raw, like as they are. Uh, a good example of multiple regression at the first level is when you enter in things like motion parameters. Right. So during realignment, SPM will estimate how much the subject moved at each time point in the x, y, z directions, in the roll, pitch, yaw rotations. It will write out each of those into a separate column, into a text file, and then you can enter that into the GLM uh, as a multiple regressor file. And basically, that tries to account for any variance attributed to just motion. Okay. Uh, one last technical note. You know, when we do first level general linear models, really that is a form of multiple linear regression. We're just trying to see whether the time course of our data can be accounted for or fit by a model that is a summation of different regressors and beta weights. But we'll cover that later. So uh, in MATLAB, what we're going to do is within a first level analysis, and here I'm just going to load up something which already has all my scans, all the specifications are already in there. Uh, so we've covered multiple conditions and how we entered those. We have a, a .mat file where we put all that stuff in. Now under multiple regressors, let's say that you know for this one run, this one session in SPM parlance, we have a text file which has six columns, each one with a different amount of uh, say movement in the different directions. So there are going to be six columns and each one corresponds to a different direction or a different rotation. Right? So if we run that, what we'll see once it gets done estimating the, the model is that the leftmost columns are going to be our conditions or things that were convolved with a hum hemodynamic response. And these six columns over here, you see R1, R2, R3, up into R6, those are the six motion regressors and they they look like these very uh, kind of continuous bands you know there's some some sharp changes in color maybe corresponding to sharper changes in motion but they're like that because now we have at each time point a different value for each of those regressors right it's not involved with anything so they're just entered as is okay now another cool thing that you can do with multiple regression, something that's perhaps a little bit more interesting, is if you want to enter things like the time course from uh, an ROI or voxel, and let's say you want to do functional connectivity. Or maybe you're doing something called a, a PPI, psychophysiological interaction, which requires that you enter stuff into the model as regressors. Specifically, once you've done all the preparatory PPI stuff, you get an interaction term and then you enter that into the model as a regressor. You don't you don't convolve it with anything. So let's just say that we had, say, a simple time course. And the most important thing, you know, I, this isn't an actual time course. I haven't really grabbed one. But I'm just going to simulate one by just taking 238 random time points. Okay, because there are 238 time points per run. I just want to make sure it matches up. Uh, the important thing is you got to make sure that you, you know, this can have as many columns as you want. It could have three columns. That's fine, but make sure that you assign it to a variable called R. Yeah, and then once you have that, you can save that to a mat file. This is the syntax, the name of the mat file, and then in single quotes, the name of the variable. Right. Once we have that, we can actually load that up into our multiple regressors. Okay. So same thing as before, same scans, same defaults, everything. That's all fine. But now, under multiple regressors, instead of those motion regressors, I'm going to use this timecourses.mat, which has that R variable saved in it. And the R variable has three columns in there. So let's just say that those are three time courses for whatever reason. The point is, 
that stuff isn't involved with anything. So you're going to see a similar thing, but these last three columns are regressors, which are not involved, and you know you can think of those as time courses. You can think of those as interaction terms if you're doing PPI. And I think in general that that about covers what people would use those regressors for. You might be able to think of other things. Uh, anything that's not involved with a basis function that you think still might account for some variance. Either because it's nuisance or maybe something you're still interested in but you don't think that it's going to be reflected well by this say human dynamic response function. Okay, So that's how you do multiple regression at the first level and the next tutorial we'll talk about how to do multiple regression at the second level using covariance.